Will strength training destroy your body? Yeah, buddy! Hey, please! A lot of people like to point towards Ronnie Coleman when referring to why strength training, specifically lifting very heavy weights, can cause your body to break down and over time result in lifelong consequences that inhibit your ability to move and perform. And recently we've been seeing a lot more examples of young teens and even children lifting ludicrous amounts of weight. And with the comments being more destructive than all of Twitter combined, I felt like now's the right time to address this topic. Will strength training destroy your body? But before I start, a quick installment from today's video sponsor which helped me make videos like these possible and available for you guys. This video is sponsored by Manscaped, the best brand for men's grooming and hygiene. The bulking season is once again upon us, and that also means we're closing in on Christmas. So Manscaped has got you covered with the best gifts all in one single inclusive package, being the Performance Package 4.0, consisting of the almighty Lawnmower 4.0 for shaving your face and body with its new skin safe and waterproof design. It also comes with an air and nose hair trimmer known as the Weed Whacker, also the Crop Preserver, ball toner, boxer briefs, shaving mat, and also a six-piece stainless steel nail kit. They basically got everything you need to look like a Mr. Olympia, so head on over to manscaped.com and use the code BADGUY for 25% off your entire order right now on Cyber Monday, and also free worldwide shipping. Everything will be linked down below in the description. In the last couple of years, the frequency of people going to the gym has increased a lot, and with video platforms like TikTok and Instagram promoting short videos and a lot of poor information, it's very easy for new lifters and people who don't train at all to get caught up in a lot of myths regarding fitness and strength training. Take for instance when so-called influencers just post whatever they feel like and manage to make it somewhat believable, at least to the untrained eye. You are not supposed to look like that! You're not designed to look like that. That's not taking care of your body. It's clear that information isn't always one thing or the other, of course, as the most common phrase within any field of science, it depends. Now, for the general population, strength training will in no way damage your joints, ligaments, or skeletal muscle tissue, at least for 95% of people. It's been shown and documented time and time again that the opposite is usually true. So why do people still boast that training hard will cause you to get injured and sustain lasting damage? Well, because there's actually some truth to this theory. Let me explain. Even if the general population will almost always benefit from any sort of exercise, the tables can somewhat turn if you're either an elite level athlete, you are in a severe hypocaloric or nutrition deficient diet, or you take performance enhancing drugs. But let's see what the science says about this. So just to have something to base the claims on, I believe that the strongest relatable lifters in the world are powerlifters. Yes, strong men tend to be a bit stronger if you think of absolute strength, but what applies to a 400 plus pound 6 foot 8 man who takes massive amounts of PEDs and eats 10,000 calories every day isn't really applicable to anyone else. There are just a couple of cross-sectional studies who have investigated the relationship between very heavy lifting and injuries, and they noted that no training methodologies for powerlifters had any significant increase of injury risk between variables other than gender. That means that training load and experience didn't really have anything to do with risk of injury, but in general men did actually injure themselves a bit more than women. It was also stated that those who reported injuries were still able to strength train by just changing some aspects of their training programming. But that alone doesn't really tell us a lot about how heavy lifting compares to other sports. So here's actually an article showing that compared to other sports, the injury rate of elite powerlifters is actually one of the lowest out there being lower than even that of treadmill running or even tennis by quite some margin. And in adolescent powerlifters, the injury prevalence is almost non-existent when you use injury rate per thousand hours of training. It's even stated that injuries related to powerlifting are much less severe than those of other sports, which also suggests that it's much easier to actually continue training after sustaining any strength training related injuries. The largest risk factors for injury are still listed as improper load and fatigue management, also including poor warm-ups and poor lifting technical execution, especially for multi-joint movements and compound lifts. And even in the setting of children lifting weights, there are no studies or data showing that they will have an increased risk of injury long-term or short-term while lifting heavy stuff. 
This also goes for the age-old myth that lifting weights will stunt your growth, which it absolutely will not. I'm not even sure where this theory comes from, but I believe it had to do something with the fact that bodybuilders and weightlifters are usually a bit shorter than the average population. But to debunk that myth, uh, shorter people do better in bodybuilding in the same way that taller people do well in basketball. But some of you may still say, oh, but what about Ronnie Coleman who practically destroyed his body by lifting? Well, he's one in a million and definitely not a common case. Ronnie supposedly had injuries also related to his young football career before starting bodybuilding, and he was also genetically predisposed to having poor back and hip health, alongside training insanely hard while pushing a ton of PEDs at very low levels of body fat, and going against any physician's advice. Additionally, he had been through a bunch of surgeries, some of which I believe were rather unsuccessful. So unless you plan on becoming an eight-time Mr. Olympia, using Ronnie Coleman as an example of pretty much anything isn't really relevant in the setting of lifting injuries. So to summarize, you are very unlikely to experience severe injuries while lifting, even as an elite lifter, adolescent lifter, or an average person. And if you want to say otherwise, then feel free to do so in the comments below and hopefully we can have some clean discussions down there. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoy these types of videos, so please let me know what you think, feel free to leave a like or even a comment, I'll see you guys next time.